What's up guys, my name is Ivan Valdovinos and I create videos on graduate school life and advice. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. On this channel, I have shared several statement of purposes that have gotten my friends and myself into Harvard, Columbia, NYU, and more. After carefully analyzing these statement of purposes, I have noticed five commonalities that I plan to share with you today. One of the commonalities that I noticed in the statement of purposes I got all my friends into Harvard was that they stated their goals clearly. It is important for you to tell the admissions committee why this graduate degree is important to you and your professional and personal goals. How will that um, you know, program help elevate those skills that is going to make you reach your goals and transform people's lives. So admissions committees want to know that you have a defined goal that is very clear, detailed, and that fits with their graduate degree. Admissions committees also want to know that you are pursuing the graduate degree for the right reasons. And this can be seen through your, you know, the state, your stated clear goals. Um, they also want to know that you know what a graduate degree entails because if you're applying for a PhD, that's four to five years of your life engaging in, in rigorous research and also graduate work, obviously. So they want to know that your goals match the, um, the goals of the program and your personal goals. All right, let's look at some examples of those statement of purposes that I have um, read and analyzed, that way you get a sense of what a clear goal is for a graduate statement of purpose. The Education Policy and Management Master's program at Harvard University aligns with my commitment to address social justice issues. My goal is to become a transformative leader in research-driven education reform at the local level in order to improve the lives and shape the futures of marginalized students in small rural towns in the state of Washington and beyond. Specifically, my graduate goals are to develop policy that will improve the educational experiences of marginalized young people. The EPM program at Harvard University will best equip me with the theoretical knowledge and practical experience to become an agent of change to improve the quality, coherence, applicability, and educational significance of intervention programs for the underserved. So as you can tell in this example here, the applicant um, provides detailed goals. So he says that he wants to become a transformative leader in research-driven education reform. And then he goes further and says that he wants to do that at the local level. So not the state level, not the national level, not the international level, but the local level. And then he goes further and explains that he wants to make that difference in Washington state. And he discusses the small rural community. So as you can tell in this example, this applicant was very detailed in his goals and you have to be that detailed in yours as well because one way to make yourself unique is by providing yourself um, or explaining yourself as like this niche and so by being very specific that niche you know comes together really well let's look at another example it did not take long for me to realize that a wide range of academic levels were present with, within my kindergarten through eighth grade classes. Test scores corroborated what I already intuitively knew. I am teaching students in the first percentile and 99th percentile. To make things even more challenging, I am teaching students in 50% English and 50% Spanish because I teach in a dual language school. It can be overwhelming for one teacher to try to meet the diverse needs of students. My colleagues have constantly been the ones to collaborate with me to address student needs. School leadership has been intermittently helpful. Four years of teaching in this context has endeared me to the mission of excellence and equity in public elementary schools. It has also shown me that we need better school leadership in order to organize that excellence and equity. I am applying to the Harvard Graduate School of Education School Leadership Program in order to become an elementary school administrator and to pursue my academic interest of bilingual education, gifted education, and school finances. In this second example, you see that the applicant stated his goals at the end. 
So he states that he wants to become an elementary school administrator, in particular a, um, a school leader. So um, a principal, I think um, he wrote in here. And he also wants to focus on bilingual education, gifted education, and school finances, which he, he discusses more throughout his statement of purpose. He provides um, a brief anecdote of what his life is like as a teacher and how he hasn't and, and what and he also explains some of those challenges he has faced and why that led to him becoming or wanting to become a school principal at an elementary school. So as you can tell, he's very detailed and he uses his background to um, support his career choice. The next similarity that I noticed in the successful Harvard um, Statement of Purposes is that all the applicants provided some background of who they were and how they reached their choice of their graduate program, but also their research interests. So the committee wants to know that you are passionate about education or whatever field you're trying to um, get into. And one of the ways to do that is by providing an anecdotal narrative of how you reached a decision for graduate school, but also your specific program and um, degree. And so one of the things I suggest is that you think very thoroughly and, you know, dive deep into those issues that you have noticed in education or whatever space that you're um, trying to pursue and talk about those in your statement of purpose and, you know, make that connection between your personal experience and also the graduate program and your research and your graduate school goals. Some of the ways to go about this is by speaking about maybe your personal challenges with going through the American educational system or it can also be you know as an undergraduate how has research challenged you or you know maybe you struggled with your academics early on in your higher education as an undergraduate. Talk about that and how how that led into your research interests and your personal goals and your goal to atta attain a graduate degree. You know, so you can look at this in different ways. It doesn't have to be solely about your background. Like usually in my statement of purposes, I speak about like my cultural background. So me being Latino and, and being me um, living in a rural community. But if you don't have something, um, you know, like that to share, you could talk about some of the other challenges you faced as an undergraduate or in other, you know, um, perspectives. That way the admissions committee can know how you reached a decision. And they really like that um, when they read the statement of purposes because because it brings life to your statement of purpose. And the purpose of the statement of purpose is um, not only to state why you want to go to graduate school, but also to share with them, you know, who you are because other aspects of the application don't allow you that opportunity. So take this time to share that with them, you know, your background, whether it's cultural, personal, or whatever, just share with them who you are, bring life to your application. And, and this is a great way to do that. All right, let's look at some examples. Growing up in Huntington Park, California, a sub city of the inner Los Angeles area, placed me in a location with limited and scarce academic resources. My middle and high schools were overpopulated and the majority of staff was more interested in preventing gang activity and substance abuse than creating a college-going culture. Students were crammed into classrooms where class sizes averaged 35 to 40 students and were expected to share books and outdated resources. Due to the poor preparation provided by my high school, I arrived at UC Berkeley unsure of whether I was entitled to my spot in the prestigious university. In my early classes, I remember professors talking about concepts I have never heard of, mentioning names like Foucault and Weber as if they were simple, well-known concepts. It seemed as if the message that sent by my middle and high school administrators and counselors was confirmed. Huntington Park students should not go to college. So as you can tell in this example here, the applicant is very detailed about their personal experience and backgrounds. They discuss, you know, where they're from. So Huntington Park, California, which is an inner city um, outside of Los Angeles. And they speak about their experience in middle school and high school. So they talk about, you know, the lack of resources, um, large classroom sizes and outdated resources. And then they, they move that into their experience as an undergraduate early on. So they speak about UC Berkeley and how, you know, they were unprepared to be at a higher education institution um, and how that brought about um, you know their goal of attaining a degree at Harvard um, for education. All right the next example. On my first day of college listening to the university president speak at the president's convocation I thought I had everything planned out. 
The entire freshman class was seated by college with the exception of a small section of undeclared students. I remember President Sonso saying that this group represented the typical college student. He continued to say that the average college student changes their major three times and that many of us would likely change our majors. As it turns out, he was right. I did represent the typical student and changed my major, but my experiences have been anything but typical. I started my college freshman year as a pre-med health science major. During the spring semester of my freshman year, I realized health science was not for me and switched to behavioral neuroscience the following fall. As one of the major requirements, I had to take a psychology elective. I chose to take a developmental psychology, which was one of the best academic decisions I have ever made. One of the assignments for my developmental class was an in-class observation where we observed children and their parents and wrote a term paper discussing their visit while incorporating theoretical concepts. I absolutely loved it. No, I absolutely loved working on it and was excited to apply theory to a real-life setting. The amount of interest I felt in my developmental psychology class was far greater than in, in any other class. The realization that I had a passion for psychology led me to change my major at the end of the semester. So in this paragraph, um, the introductory paragraph, you see that the student speaks about their university, um, um, what's it called, the university experience. So they speak about how they got to their major and how that major led to their, you know, choice to um, research uh, psychology in the sector of education and how a an assignment in class allowed the student to get, get to that passion and that major. Um, they also are very detailed in terms of like, you know, starting off with like, they learn, they, t they hear the university president speak at convocation and how that spoke to them and how that the student changed their mind in terms of major numerous times and then finally came to a decision. So as you can tell, these students spoke about their backgrounds which led to their decision to um, pursue graduate school, but also their degree and their um, program. And so I suggest that you also speak about your experiences and talk about those experiences in your statement of purpose. That way it brings life to your application, but also be, um, it shows the committee your passions and how you got to your decision of pursuing graduate studies at their institution. The next thing that you need to mention in your statement of purpose is your research experience. So if you don't already know, a graduate degree is going to rely heavily on reading and writing and your research experience. You know, they're going to want you to write extensive, um, you know, literature reviews as well as projects that rely on theory and they're going to have you conduct a couple of studies whether it's for the practical sense or more theoretical and so you have to show the committee that you are well prepared to um, assume a role in a graduate degree that's going to be um, heavily rely on you know research skills so in this portion of your statement of purpose, you want to talk to the committee about your experience, whether that be in a lab or a summer re research opportunity, or maybe you wrote a small little literature review for an assignment. Speak about that in detail though. So what they want you to include your methods, you know, what methodology did you use? Did you, you know, use interviews? Did you observe? Did you, um, you know, develop a survey that you disseminated? Did you, um, and then, talk about how you analyze your data. Did you do a qualitative study, a quantitative study? Did you do regression analysis? Did you do a case study methodology? So what methodology did you use in relation to your um, project? They also want you to discuss your theoretical frameworks, what, what theoretical frameworks helped shape your research, whether it was like critical race theory or, you know, activity theory or disability theory, whatever theory you use, mention that in your um, explanation of your research experience. Finally, they want you to they want to know that you are able to communicate that research at various settings. So speak about how maybe you presented that research um, in front of your class or maybe you got accepted into a conference, you did a poster or a oral presentation. Maybe you um, were part of a roundtable discussion or you were invited as a guest speaker for um, you know, a, um, a board. So speak about your communication of your research in this section of the application. I mean, in this section of the statement of purpose. 
look at some examples of how um, successful Harvard applicants incorporated this research experience in their statement of purposes. Focusing on how their families, gender norms, and expectations affect Chicano Latina women as they venture out to pursue higher education, my thesis sought to investigate through in-depth interviews how families support, negotiate, or reject their daughter's higher education decisions. Furthermore, the interviews were coded with a specific and opposing theoretical framework in mind. Gloria E. Ansaldua's Culturas que traicionan, Cultures that Betray, and Patricia Hill Collins' mother work. Family and traditions can be daughter's limits, becoming cultures that betray, as women can be the ones that perpetuate their own oppression. On the other hand, mother work describes mothers of colors fight against society in order to teach their children their culture and survival. This paradigm was set up in order to explore the fluidity of the axis of gender as it intersects with race and ethnicity. Through this research then, I found that as daughters begin to form their identities as Chicana Latina college students, their parents also begin to develop a relationship with the system of higher education. In both instances, the relationship was stressful and frustrating as students' identities and cultures challenged them. Parents found themselves amongst a the system they were un unable to understand and maneuver. As the daughters changed, so did the parents, but there was a reflexive quality to this change that neither col culturas que traicionas nor mother works could capture the particular context and flavor of these mutual adjustments. This demonstrates the complex, diverse, and unique location of Ch Chicano Latino families. So as you can tell, this applicant was very detailed in their research experience, their thesis. They discussed that they did in-depth interviews and um, in order to find out how families support, negotiate, or reject their daughter's higher ed education decisions. They also speak about theoretical frameworks, so both culturas que traicionan and mother work. They also um, speak about how you know, they incorporated these theoretical frameworks into their findings and what they found. And then they ended it with describing, you know, here's what I found and here, here's where the gaps in the research are. And so the next paragraph, she discusses, you know, based on this experience and the gaps that I saw, here's what I want to do research on when I go to graduate school at your institution. Next example. My summer co-op consisted of a summer internship at the Yale, Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence with the focus on applied research. During my internship, I was assigned to two research projects. One involved using statistical methods to measure factors such as school climate on student outcomes. The other involved implementing an emotional intelligence curriculum in preschool classrooms. Throughout the summer, I discovered I loved working on the combination of the two projects. I was able to explore the educational and developmental psychology literature while learning about advanced statistical methods used to analyze data in the fields. To commemorate my internship, I presented a 40-minute talk to center staff summarizing my summer work. In addition, I submitted a poster to the SRCD Developmental Methods Conference highlighting my work. The poster was accepted and I presented at my first research, research conference in the fall, where I received research advice from senior researchers and saw some of the current research of the field. My internship at Yale provided me with opportunities that strengthened my analytical skills through the variety of assignments involving creating new solutions to current research and critically reviewing prior research. I was constantly challenged to think outside of the box and to come up with new ways to tackle the research questions faced in each of the two projects. So this student takes a different approach to talking about her, her research experiences. So she discusses her um, cooperative opportunity experience in the summer at the Yale Center for Emo Emotional Intelligence. And she speaks about her um, research skills that she gained. So she talked a lot about statistical methods and how she was able to use that to measure, measure felt factors such as school climate on student outcomes. And then she talks about how she was able to work on and emotional intelligence curriculum in preschool classrooms. And then she talks about her communication of that um, research. So she was able to present her work at the SRCD Developmental Methods Conference. And then she was also able to engage with other senior researchers and learned about different um, 
methodolog methodological techniques, but also was able just to learn about the current field and the research in the field. And then she discusses how, you know, um, this opportunity allowed her to gain the skills that are going to help her be successful at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. As you can tell, these applicants, you know, were very detailed in describing their research experience. They mentioned their methodologies, their theoretical frameworks, what skills they gained, how they communicated their research. So I suggest that you use some of these tactics in your statement of purpose as you revise them for final submission. The next component that I saw um, similar in all of the Harvard successful applications was this, um, they spoke about their graduate plans. So what does this mean? So the committee wants to know that you are, that you have plans for when you get into the program, if you get into the program. So what types of things are you gonna engage in within the community um, at the Harvard Graduate School of Education or whatever program you're, um, you're applying to and how is that going to help you reach your career goals and how are you going to gain you know those practical theoretical and research skills in order for you to be successful in your future career so um, some of the ways you can go about this in your statement of purpose is by detailing your proposed research projects so this is more for phd applicants so if you're um, as a phd student you're going to be writing a dissertation so you might want to include in your statement of purpose you know your research plan your research um, focus and how you want to go about conducting that research if you are applying for the master's degree for example you know you want to make sure you explain in this section what types of um research you might want to get involved with and then maybe you know what practical experiences you want to get engaged with within either the the city the graduate school or the school as a whole and so um, that is going to provide the admissions committee with some insight on you know what are your graduate goals once you get into the school and how do you want to gain those skills that you need um, for your future career all right let's look at one example for a PhD applicant and how you can write a detailed um, explanation of your potential dissertation. Through my thesis, I discovered that parents' voices and experiences are often left out of the literature, minimizing their roles and leaving their children to depend on a dis distant or fragmented relationship with higher education. As a result, I have become interested in further exploring parents' role within higher education and how this relationship in return can shape student experiences. Grounded on critical race and gender theory as theoretical frameworks, my graduate work, I plan on researching how it is that parents of first-generation Chicano Latino college students understand the system of higher education. Through a qualitative interview-based project, I seek to explore the relationship between these families and higher education. Specifically, I want to look at how it is that these parents develop their understanding and, per and perceptions of the system. What are the resources, tools, knowledge, and power structures that help help them develop these notions and what are the limits and barriers they face. Similarly, I want to investigate how families' understanding and reactions to higher education influence the decisions and experiences of Chicano Latino students. To what degree do these students take into consideration their families' opinions of higher education, the reasoning behind it, and the result of these decisions are all notions that I seek to explore through my graduate work. This research becomes important due to the changing dynamics in American society. The Chicano Latino population is increasingly growing, shifting the, the dynamics of society. Thus, there needs to be re-evaluation of the population's full incorporation into the educational system. So as you can tell here, the applicant does a good job of explaining what their potential dissertation topic is going to be. So they discuss the, um, that they want to investigate more, um, you know, how parents, what are the parents' roles within higher education and how that can in return shape a student experience. They discuss their theoretical framework that they're gonna be using critical race and gender theory. And then they also discuss their methodology. So it's gonna be a qualitative interview based project that um, is gonna help them explore this, you know, overarching question. Then they discuss at the end why this is important. So the reason why it's important is because, you know, American society is growing in terms of the Chicano Latino population and how, how there needs to be you know, more um, programming and, you know, um, focus on this population of students. And so that's a good thing to add when you are, you know, discussing your potential dissertation. So like, why is this important? Why should someone care? 
to sum up, in order to strengthen your statement of purpose, don't forget to discuss your graduate plans, whether that be research, practical experiences, or a combination of both. Tell the committee, you know, what are you going to do with this education while you're at the school in the program? How is this program going to help you succeed? And how are you going to take the initiative to make that possible? The final commonality that I notice in these successful Harvard um, Statement of Purposes is that they all mentioned why they want to pursue a graduate education at Harvard University. So um, what they include in this section is what are the tools, who are the faculty, and, who, and what other opportunities that are solely at Harvard are going to help them succeed in the program and then the professional um, careers. So you want to mention, you know, you know, name drop some of the faculty and their research and how they apply to your um, personal and professional interests. So as you will see in the examples, these applicants were very detailed and name dropped, you know, some of their favorite professors and how their research aligns with theirs and how that is going to help them succeed at the institution, both at the master and PhD levels. The admissions committee wants to know you can be mentored. So once you, you know, if you do get into Harvard, they're gonna assign you a, you know, a mentor, whether it's an advisor or research mentor. So for, for me, for example, I was able to work with Dr. Karen Mapp and her research aligned with mine. So we were both looking at family engagement and different scopes. And so they assigned me to her. She was my mentor throughout the year I was at HGSC. And that's important because they want to know that you're going to that you are going to be able to be mentored and that you're going to be able to take direction from your, um, you know, this advisor, this mentor that they're going to assign you to. So make sure that in your statement of purpose, you name someone who you see yourself as as your mentor. And so that's going to help the committee better, you know, align you with someone. But also it's important to note that. If you mention someone in the um, in your statement of purpose, they're gonna, you know, send over your application to that person. And if that person vouches to want you for the program, that's gonna help you get in. So you want to make sure that you name drop people that align with your interests and are gonna help accelerate your personal and career goals. So name drop, you know, I would say no more than three, but at least one. And so you're gonna see some of those examples in the examples I'm going to provide. I am particularly drawn to the Education Policy and Management Master's program because of the opportunity to select courses that best match my interests, experience, and goals. Particularly, I am interested in taking Dr. Roberto Gonzalez's class on contemporary, contemporary Immigration Policy and Educational Practice and Dr. Karen Smack's course on the Elements of Effective Family School Partnerships. It is also attractive to have the opportunity to cross-register at the Kennedy School of Government and the Business School. This will allow me to view education reform from different, different perspectives. Additionally, the field internship program will enrich my graduate experience and give me the opportunity to put theory into practice. I am excited at the chance to work at an education reform nonprofit, such as the Center for Collaborative Educa Education, where I can design and implement programs to bring about the kind of long-lasting intergenerational change that I envision. So as you can see in this example, the applicant was detailed in what they wanted to pursue at Harvard Graduate School of Education. So they wanted to take course, courses with Dr. Roberto Gonzalez and Dr. Karen Mapp um, because those two courses aligned with with the applicant's career goals. They also spoke about cr cross-registering at the Kennedy School and the Business School so they can, you know, look at education reform from different perspectives. And then finally, they ended with um, discussing that they wanted to do the field internship program and work at the Center for Collaborative Ed Education so they can gain more skills like designing and implementing programs um, to transform educational education for their niche. Next example. I want to study in SLP because of its flexible curriculum and the opportunity it provides for collaboration. A principal earns his or her title by being the principal teacher of the school. To prepare for my vocation as a principal teacher, I would like to become an expert in education. As I noted before, my academic interests are varied, bilingual education, gifted education, and school finance. After consulting the core curriculum and SLP alumni, I am most looking forward to these relevant courses. 
Dr. Paola Uselli's H813 Bilingual Learners and Dr. Lee Titel's A397 Leading for Equity and Diversity in Integrated Schools. My favorite aspect of SLP's flexible curriculum is the opportunity to cross-register in another graduate school. For many educators, our focus is only on collaborating with other educators. I want to cross-register in another graduate school in order to invite future leaders of business or law into the mission of education. Dr. Rosabeth Motz Cantor of the Harvard Business School often quotes the African adage, it takes a village to raise a child, but reworks it for our contemporary challenges by saying it takes a cross-sector, multi-stakeholder co coalition to raise a child. Cross-sector collaboration starts with relationships. One of my main goals is taking a business or law school law class would be to befriend a classmate and start that cross-sector collaboration. Another opportunity for collaboration with an SLP is of course with, with other educators. I think it is a natural tendency for students to focus on camaraderie in the present, start together, study together, and graduate together. But what happens when the SLP cohort is no longer together? My focus within the SLP cohort would be to be a would be to would be to find a way to bind us together for life after graduation. This long-term focus would integrate every relationship I have during the nine brief months on campus. So as you can tell here, the applicant provides some classes he wants to take. So he wants to take Dr. Paola Uselli's Bilingual Learners and Dr. Lee Titles Leading for Equity and Diversity in Integrated Schools. He also speaks about the flexible curriculum and cross-registration again with other graduate schools and that he wants to form these collaborations with business people as well as law uh, makers. And so he discusses that. He also discusses, um, you know, the cohort-based program, the SLP program, that it's cohort-based and he wants to bind these students together for life and build this um, you know, network of people so he can tap into once he's out of HGSE because it is a nine month um, program so it, it runs really quickly. As you can tell, these applicants were very thorough and why they wanted to attend Harvard University for the Graduate School of Education. And so I suggest that in your applications that you provide a section that's very detailed, speak about the courses you wanna take, speak about the, um, you know, the other experiences such as you, um, the internships or, you know, the faculty that you wanna work with, Talk about all those and you can even talk about it, you know, campus wide. So, you know, a lot, um, these two applicants spoke about cross registration. So speak about those opportunities and how they're going to help you achieve your goal and whatever your niche is. So, for example, this niche was education reform. And so, you know, tie all those opportunities into your career goal and how that's going to help you get there. And so, um, don't forget to include a why this institution section because they're going to be looking for that when they are reading your application. That is it for today's video. If you found value in this video, please give it a like and subscribe. Good luck on finalizing your statement of purposes and your applications for graduate school. I will see you in the next video.